How old is Minecraft? Oh, 16 years. Well, mystery solved, video over. Goodbye, everyone. But really, this is a question I was pondering a few days ago. How old is the Minecraft world? An exercise that's pretty common in earth science labs and exams is to be given a geologic cross-section and interpret the geologic history. Today, we'll be doing the same for Minecraft. Obviously, every world is unique, but in a general sense, they follow the same generation pattern and template. Using real-world examples, we should also be able to get a ballpark estimate of the Minecraft world's geologic age. Big emphasis on ballpark. Now, something I must get out of the way, the dirt. Pockets of dirt sealed underground within solid rock. As far as I know, this just doesn't happen IRL. I got some inspiration from Nice Name, another geologist YouTuber, and I'm pretty sure he mentioned not doing a geologic history because of this. Like any good moral and ethical researcher, I'm gonna do the right thing and pretend it doesn't exist. But seriously, I'd actually be interested in what his thoughts are on this. Although I'm a little nervous because he's like an actual university professor with a research lab and a family and everything and I'm just a student. Anyway, enough yapping, let's get down to science. To properly interpret geologic history, we have to know the five fundamental laws of geology. They are as follows. Superposition, original horizontality, lateral continuity, cross-cutting relationships, and faunal succession. Superposition states that units are deposited on top of old ones, so younger units will be placed above older ones. Is this always the case? Of course not. But generally, yes. Moving on, original horizontality states that units, or sedimentary layers, are originally deposited flat. Lateral continuity states that layers extend laterally or to the side until they thin out or reach a barrier. Finally, cross-cutting relationship states that younger features cut across older ones. Faunal succession just means that certain fossils appear and disappear at predictable intervals, but we can't use that in Minecraft, so we really just need the first four. Now we need a section to interpret. This is a pretty standard cut of the Minecraft world. To interpret geologic history, we also have to identify our geology. There are three separate primary layers, bedrock, stone, and deep slate. I've done a few shorts speculating on the real world counterparts of these blocks, but in summary, I believe bedrock is gabbro, the intrusive counterpart of basalt, and stone is limestone. As far as deep slate, slate is real rock, and it kinda looks like that, so good enough. So with bedrock at the bottom, there's one of two ways you could go with this. First, bedrock is a gabbro basement rock that represents the oldest rock that would have first formed when the Minecraft world was young. Or, the bedrock represents plutonic intrusions from the mantle, assuming Minecraft is a planet, that have destroyed the original basement cratons. I'm more inclined to go for the second one, as the bedrock doesn't seem to be metamorphosed, and there are metamorphic rocks above it. Also, this contact or boundary between the units is rough, that is to say, it isn't depositional, but we'll get back to that in a minute. For deep slate and stone, I think it's best if we look at these units together. Slate is grade 1 metamorphic shale, that means it is a mudstone that has undergone minimal metamorphism, but still enough to change it into a different rock. So originally, we have shale, overlain by limestone. My first thought is that this represents part of a classic transgressive sequence. As you could expect, different sediments are deposited on land than underwater. When sea level rises, or transgresses, it produces a predictable sequence of deposits. Sand on land, mud in shallow water, and limestone or carbonates in deep water. The contact between the shale, which has begun transforming into slate, and the unmetamorphosed limestone is not smooth. This suggests that there was an extended period of time between the shale being deposited and the limestone above it. This is called an unconformity. There are several types, but this specifically is what we call a disconformity. So there was a period of exposure and erosion post-shale and pre-limestone. One more thing, there's tuff inside only the slate layer. This really shouldn't be here. Tuff is a volcanic rock formed from pyroclastics or explosive volcanic eruptions. The tuff could just be inclusions from older eruption deposits, but then why is the slate metamorphosed and the tuff isn't? Ugh. Or maybe pyroclastic flows were hitting the shallow water where the shale was depositing, but then can tuff weld underwater? I honestly don't know. A little research turned up a few studies that say yes, but I'm a little skeptical on their credibility, and it still presents the issue of the tuff being not metamorphic. Anyways, based on all that, here's my crack at the history. So we start with a hot Hadean protoplanet over time, quite a bit of time. It begins to cool and differentiate and starts to form thicker and thicker continental crust. 
As the crust thickens, there is a transition from predominantly effusive eruptions to explosive ones. Lava travels upward through the thicker crust and becomes more felsic, silica-rich, and is therefore more viscous. So you get massive tuff deposits from worldwide explosive volcanism. Eventually the activity dies down and erosion dominates the surface, wearing down and breaking up the tuff units. Additionally, we start to have shallow global seas beginning to form with large accumulations of liquid water. This results in shale deposits forming with pieces of eroded tuff within. Then the shallow oceans disappeared, perhaps in a glaciation event. Not a full snowball earth where weathering would be shut down, but enough to have lots of chemical weathering and glacial erosion, grinding up the top of the shale unit. Over time, volcanic activity or perhaps a meteor bombardment would reverse the feedback and lead to a significant greenhouse effect, melting everything. This combined with more accumulation of liquid water would ultimately result with a deep ocean covering the entire globe that would persist for a long time and eventually depositing Minecraft's thickest crustal unit, the limestone. Eventually, the same volcanism that reversed the glaciation would build up islands around the world which would increase the amount of rainfall and more chemical weathering, which in turn would eventually balance out the greenhouse effect leading to the formation of some icy biomes and generally the overworld climate as we know it today. And with the formation of these icy biomes, the sea level would then drop to its present day level. Then of course, tectonics and other surficial processes would need time to form mountains and erode the massive global cave systems. At the same time, we would have ongoing magmatic intrusions forming not only the bedrock layer, but also we would have magma creeping up through the crust becoming felsic and creating these plutons of granite and diorite. There's also andesite, which is actually extrusive, meaning it had to erupt on the surface. It's possible that the same volcanism that could have warmed the world out of the Ice Age created some andesitic flows that were preserved in the limestone. Generally, the time post-water world up to present is when all the extra stuff like caves, geodes, would be forming. Cross-cutting relationships, y'all. As for that pesky dirt within the limestone, it's possible that you could have small sinkholes that would collapse and have dirt go underground and then the hole collapses in on itself and so then you have dirt inside of limestone. That would mean that the limestone has collapsed that way and it's not um, formed as one solid piece, but eh, eh, eh. In conclusion, that's one interpretation. It's not perfect, but I'd like to believe it at least crosses into the realm of possibility. As far as how much time this all would have taken, there's actually way too many unknowns, but I... What I can give you is a tentative estimate of just this section. Deposition rates vary wildly through history and depend on many different variables. The benefit of the doubt, I'll just use the highest values I was able to find from a quick Google Scholar. I found a rate of 4 meters per million years for ancient shale deposits, plus or minus 1 of course. Deep Slate has an average thickness of 58 blocks, and since one block is 1 meter, so 58 meters, 4 meters per million years, 14.5 million years. The maximum thickness of the limestone layer was likely around 150 meters, based on the maximum height of plateaus. Mountains don't count, they were pushed up, and that's also assuming the geomorphology we see today was eroded down out of the original plateau height. In this textbook, I found 30 centimeters per thousand years, so one meter per 3,000 years. Yeah, yeah, approximate. So 450,000 years. In total, about 15 million years just for the deposition of the deep slate and the stone. And that doesn't count the time that came before, the unconformities, the formation of the surface geomorphology, the time to metamorphose or the post-deposition with the formation of all the cross-cutting features, all of which took God only knows how long. Maybe I can make another video where we break it down and get really serious with the calculations, but if I had to slap a number on all of it, I would just go for a billion years. And again, that, that's a disgusting estimate. I mean, given the amount of variables and parameters that are unknown. <laughs> In conclusion, for the geology nerds, here I've compiled a cross-section to summarize. This has been a brief speculation into the geologic history of the Minecraft world, and if anyone's interested, we could go more in-depth on some specific details, but for now, I have been the Minecraft Historian, thank you so much for watching, and till next time.